You're watching a Nova Science Now video podcast. Can a robot be your friend? Engineer Cynthia Brazil certainly thinks so. She's the director of the Robotic Life Group at MIT and has designed some of the world's most emotionally engaging machines. Here's her take on friendly robots. There's something special, I think, about robots. They kind of cross that boundary from the device to the animate world, I think, more than in any other technology we've really been exposed to yet. How do you build a machine to be socially and emotionally intelligent in the way that people, or at least animals, are? The question for the robot is, not are robots going to have human emotions or dog emotions, because they're never going to be humans or dogs, but what is a robot emotion in that we would find it to be genuine and authentic the same way that we ascribe genuine emotions to dogs and other animals. That's the deeper question. If you look at movies and science fiction, of course people are very readily willing to ascribe authentic emotional states to these sort of robots you see on the screen like R2-D2 or C-3PO. They wouldn't be compelling characters if you didn't. Nice robot. You're such a cute little robot. Why do we try to pattern their robots on infants? Well, there's a number of reasons why we do that. One is simply from appreciating that when adults interact with infants and very young children, we adapt our behavior to that of the level of sophistication of the child in a way that helps the child understand us and interact with us. We make bigger gestures, we make bigger facial expressions, we become almost cartoon-like in the way we interact with young children. Makes it easier, it turns out, for babies and very young children to extract what we're trying to communicate to them. So we leverage that in building these robots that are also very youthful in their nature because it helps simplify the perceptual problem for the robots. And part of it is also just managing expectations. So having an adult interact with a robot that's not at your level, they kind of get the feeling of, oh, well, this is just like a very, very young child. For something like the Huggable, which is being designed to be this interactive teddy bear. The goal is to make it a sort of invisible robot in that when you interact with this teddy bear, you shouldn't think of it as a robot at all. There shouldn't be anything distracting about it in a technological sense that you often see in these robotic toys today. So there's so much that just screams, I'm a machine, I'm a machine. We put a soft silicone skin underneath the fur, so when you touch the fur, you feel something that's much more sort of fleshy almost. We've put a lot of thought into the design of the mechanics of the actuators so you don't hear the gears gnashing, you don't feel the grittiness of the gears. It feels much more like muscles. With my own children, I appreciate very much how much of when I play with them and interact with them, it's a very physical, tactile process. I sit them on my lap, I'm stroking their hair, you know, it's not just verbal or, or, or visual, it's, it's extremely tactile. So how do you design a robot that can understand that emotional communicative intent behind the way you touch it. So this physical, visceral, full body um, interaction is really what that project is about. What we really want are these sort of robotic companions that really nurture the child's curiosity and exploration and have it be a very sharing-oriented interaction where you're really encouraging the child to use their imagination. There's so much we still have yet to learn about how people are going to interact with these robots over a really long term. Nobody's really done that yet. Learn more about Cynthia Brazil and her friendly robots in the November 21st episode of Nova Science Now. You can see more of this slideshow on our website at pbs.org slash nova slash science now.